Okay, so next speaker are uh, Leonardo Augusto Silva Fontes, who is a civil, a civil servant at the National Archives of, of Brazil, and uh, Tiara Alves, that is a national archivist, uh, also in, in in Brazil, at the National Archive of Brazil. Okay, so please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you for all for this opportunity to share knowledge and experience. Um, my name is, that he said, uh, is Chiara, and now I'm uh, in the position of coordinator of uh, written documents at National Archives of Brazil. And he's my colleague, Leonardo, we work together. Um, and he's a paleographer at, uh, at Paleograph team of the National Archives in Brazil. Uh, recently, the Paleograph team uh, started to discuss digital paleography and the possibility of using automated transcription in its daily work. So it's a very new uh, discussion for us in the institution, in the National Archives. Uh, so this presentation intends to share the first impressions of the team and uh, also to listen and gather contributions, contributions for, this, for this, this initiative. Uh, the National Archives of Brazil uh, was created in 1838, and nowadays the institution is, is responsible for the records, records management produced and received by the federal executive branch, the preservation and access to its documents, and the implementation of the national policy on archives. Uh, so this institution preserves a vast number of funds and collections, um, which dates from si 6th century. Most of these are textual, textual documents, but uh, the institution holds the audiovisual cartographic documents as well. Um, uh, in National Archives, uh, has something like uh, uh, almost 700 uh, funds and collections, uh, and uh, the textual documents. Oh, oh, only a minute. Eu acho que pulou aqui. And the textual documents of National Archives of Brazil has a total of uh, 55 kilometers that comes from the public authorities of the executive, legislative, and the judicial branches, notary services, extrajudicial, and people, families, and the entities relevant to the history of Brazil, private documents. And this image is an example of the the document the the conjunto collection the collection uh, that was registered as a memory of the award of by UNESCO in 2017 <laughs> documents of national uh, with ne uh, documents of national archives so uh, the textual documents uh, is the, the, the paleograph team of Brazil. Uh, the male act activity uh, is produced certificates in extract and full content format for funds and collections of the National Archives. These probative documents subsidize citizens' rights. In 2022, the paleograph team elaborated a thousand six hundred eight five certificates. 
Uh, the certificates can be in extract format, uh, and for the most part, in, in this way, in extract, and draw up from lists of steamships of immigrants and their families who came to Brazil. <coughs> and the certificates in... Uh, it's, a in kind of it's a kind of certificate in extract. Uh, in, in general, the certificates are used to propose of dual citizenship. Uh, and if, uh, we produce certificates in full content format. These certificates in, uh, are probative and are informative documents in which the total information is transcribed, mostly produced by unitary documents. They can serve to guarantee civil rights, such as ownership of property and the registration of a marriage, as well as for academic proposals. So now, uh, Leonardo will continue the presentation. Good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. <laughs> uh, com, as Tiara has been saying, the paleography team uh, works in the traditional way up to now. Uh, we are trying to see solutions related to uh, artificial intelligence, like uh, transcribers, which is the most famous. Uh, and this is to overcome what we call a paleographic barrier. So to access these informations, these written informations, we need to know what is written. So uh, few people are paleographers. Uh, in National Archives nowadays we have a team with four people. So uh, it's a very specialized uh, thing. So uh, this text or documentary heritage encounter this kind of difficulties that uh, intelligence or uh, artificial intelligence can help us. That's the purpose of our work and our visit to the faber Uh Let me see this. Uh, it's important to tell that uh, there is a professor in Brazil, which is the most famous paleographer, Frank Leal. He says that the paleography is a kind of demigod, that because it brings back to life people histories that uh, otherwise wouldn't be possible to be understood. And now machines <laughs> has, has a kind of this work, so could machines be overcoming the demigod? So it's a kind of uh, reflection we do because machines can overcome human beings. I see that during the previous presentations, it was a discussion, how long can artificial intelligence go and how long archivists can go and work together with artificial intelligence. So that's our challenge there too. Um, so artificial intelligence in the archives uh, is related to the use of uh, digital paleography. So there is an article very uh, used to discuss digital paleography that talks about the archives and artificial intelligence, overview of current debates and future perspectives. Uh, and I put this cita citation there. The digital transformation is turning archives, both old and new, into data. Our colleagues from South Africa also told about this. Now archives are data, so what do you do with data? You extract <laughs> lots of things, <laughs> but yes, uh, so we can see documents now as data and it changed the whole thing into archives, into the works of paleographers. So we are trying to run after these changes, otherwise we'll become overcome by the machines and all that. So uh, included integration of artificial intelligence into archival system, systems and practice. So the practice of paleography uh, is a very old practice. So uh, even this practice, which is commonly see as the old part of uh, sci archival sciences must be up to date to digital uh, platforms, digital solutions and uh, intelligence artificial solutions too as well. So uh, there is another uh, 
citation there that is important too. Uh, thanks to Jalko for <laughs> giving us uh, this uh, reference because it's a very important article since it's made by the people who works with transcribers, the more than 20 authors. And they say that the users of transcribers, for instance, are able to extract data from handwritten and printed text via handwritten text recognition, which the technology and the artificial intelligence used to transcribe the old documents, uh, while simultaneously contributing to the improvement of the same technology, thanks to machine learning principles. So they use machine learning principles to transcribe the information for uh, the paleographers. So the automated recognition of a wide variety of historical texts has significant implications for the accessibility of the recon records as the ones from National Archives of Brazil, a huge quantity, as Tiara said, uh, and of global cultural heritage. So uh, artificial intelligence can help these cultural heritage to be bring back to life uh, because otherwise this work would be taken too much time. Somebody has said that it saves time. The, word, the artificial intelligence saves time. So the, thing, the most important thing about this is to save time. But uh, anyway, we still need the paleographers because the text of errors this uh, kind of solutions brings is about 5% uh, to 10%. So who corrects these errors? The paleographer. So we still need the paleographers when we use the intelligence artificial to paleography. And we need it a lot. So how much is profitable to use these kind of solutions to these documents? Uh, to transcribe and describe or only to transcribe and reveal by the paleographers? Uh, it's a kind of challenge we were talking in National Archives of Brazil that was trying to develop our own system to do this ATR sol solution and is being revealed by the institutions because of this. To produce models take time. We have only four people working with paleography there. So these people would have to be producing models instead of giving rights to the citizens, which is the main uh, activity of the team, for instance. So uh, the use of automated transitions for historical collections, uh, there is a Brazilian uh, Article 2, because transcribers is a new thing there. In 2020, I was in a uh, course uh, made, uh, given by these two professors, and they are the main specialists of transcribers in Brazil, Lucia Xavier and Livia Magalhães, and they kind of reposition the digital paleography. What is what is serves the digital paleography nowadays? So and they revalued the work of the paleographers. The paleographers is still needed despite of these new technologies and solutions. Uh, so this is a learn to hand situations that they get this can machines think? I think that is <laughs> a thing that first passed the whole uh, seminar. Can machines think? Let's see some some of them yet, but we have still to reveal some of the things that machines do. So uh, the main topics we are talking in National Archives of Brazil for the applies, uh, for applying the digital paleography to documents is this render recent text recognition, how far it can go, how far it can be used to transcribe or describe this huge quantity of documents. Uh, the techniques of machine learning, which are very new for both of us. We are not from the science com computer uh, fields. We are archivists and historians, so there is this kind of difficulty too to understand some uh, things about, that comes from the uh, IT technologies. Uh, the digital paleography, because we are used to the old paleography, that is look to the document and transcribing the document hand by hand, now in the computer, and the production of automated text recognition models or the use of already existing recognition models. Uh, transcribers has two uh, Portuguese models. Uh, I was part of the team as a voluntary with these two professors that helped to build the first model in Portuguese. Uh, and it's very difficult to to do it, uh, as we were talking to, with Jelko. Uh, it took like uh, two years with uh, two 
20 volunteers to produce these models. So uh, this is, takes too much time and investment, human investment and uh, resources too as well. So the high management of an institution must see if it's valuable or not to adopt like ATR solutions in our in our archive. It's not our decision. It's higher instance that decide this because it costs money, time and investments. So uh, coming to a conclusion, we tried to do a very uh, initial uh, experiment and this blue uh, underlined, it was the uh, errors that uh, I did this uh, translation through transcribers and I had to correct uh, about 20% uh, of errors. For instance, that first one that I show you, the importance of the paleographer, <laughs> uh, there is a city in the, in the northeast of Brazil called Ico. There was a battle there in 19th century, but the machine saw this. This is Villa de Ico, city of Ico. Ico is the city. The machine first understood this as S-E-O, C-O, C-O, because it's much more used, C-O, yours, in Spanish, because uh, in the Portuguese at those times, than Ico. The machine probably never have <laughs> seen before this word Ico. So the machine didn't recognize Ico as the word. So I knew it because of the context of the document we talked and I showed her, look, this is Ico probably. Let's bring the information. We research about this battle. It's the Confederação of Ecuador battle. It's a, it was an internal fight there. And we saw that it was Ico. So we, we had to have the context of this battle to understand what the word was. So the machine didn't understand it. We, I, I put it uh, twice, <laughs> the, the two models, and the machine didn't get it. So the word of the paleographer was important to because it was the main thing, what the battle happened. It's a very important information in that document to see and to know where the battle was happening and what were the effects of this battle. Uh, coming to the end, uh, it's a very initial experiment, <laughs> but it was good to, for us to see at uh, how far this technology, the artificial intelligence, can go into paleography inside a public archive as so huge as the National Archives of Brazil is and so demanded. People demand like five to ten uh, certificates per day uh, because of the dual citizenships and the, uh, the, the other rights they get from this certificate. So we are here trying to see the possibilities and the challenges that these applications of the automated transcription can. And the last thing is that the things Tiara saw, the list of the steamers, which are the main part of our job, they are produced in table like uh, you see the columns and transcribers only last month uh, had put the in one of better version the transcription by tables so it it wouldn't be uh, practical for us to adopt the transcribers for instance to transcribe the main work we do that it's the list of passengers who came to Brazil uh, from most of people who were from Europe. So uh, the European ancestors, they came to Brazil for many reasons and they were listed in this steamship passengers lists and these transcribers couldn't do this. So <laughs> we still have to do one by one, paleographer by paleographer doing these extracts and the certificates. So there is a huge challenge to apply these solutions in National Archives of Brazil. We are happy to be here and see that uh, everybody is like being uh, experimenting the artificial intelligence solutions. We are trying to go after this to see if it's possible and uh, we would like to thank the opportunity with the colleagues were everybody very uh, disponible for us to talk to see the other uh, side of this technology so I think uh, it's over yeah thank you, thank you. Yeah.